This is Working Actor School. My name is Patrick Laberto, and what follows is my lecture from an adult advanced class about connecting to your emotional core and how that's important for an actor and how an actor has to protect themselves as well. Enjoy. This is what's the difference between emotions and acting? The difference between emotions and acting is emotions are real. We experience them all day long, every day of our lives. Acting is the manipulation of your emotions to, to present in a, pro, in a project a real life person that will have emotions from A to Z, whereas it's all fake. I mean, everything about it's fake. You shoot it out of order. You 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 shoot it in the wrong places. Sometimes you're not even talking to the person that you'll end up be talking to at all. I mean, you've you, sometimes you'll have a camera on your head. I mean, there's a thousand things that it's all fake. Emotions are real. Acting is fake. That's the main difference. Today, we're going to be talking about your emotional core and how it pertains to acting. As an actor, you need to access your emotional core. Okay, what do I mean by an emotional core? Well, the emotional core is literally that thing that we don't know how to explain that sits right here where our emotions are, where when we feel something, it it you know it 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 creates movement in our bodies, it creates reactions, it makes us cry, it makes us laugh. It's it's the part of us that as actors, we need to access, but at the same time, we need to protect our emotional core. And this is really specific to my way of, of looking at acting. Not that other people don't. I just don't know if, if, you know, there's another acting class that does this. But having acted since I was a young child, you, you, no one teaches you that you you don't want to mess around with your real feelings. You don't want to mess around with things that are real in your real life. You can confuse yourself as a young actor. Thankfully, we're not young actors anymore. <laughs> we're older. Um, but what we want to do is we want to have a place where we can go to our emotional core to access an emotion, bring it out, use it for our scene and then put it back and not have it affect us the rest of the day or the rest of the night. It's like it's like going to the, the supermarket. You're, you're going to make dinner. You need to go get ingredients. You go get the ingredients. You bring them back. You make the dinner. And then the next time you go to the grocery store, the, the ingredients are still there because they're still stocked up. You, you, you want to keep your emotional core stocked up. Um, and how do you do that? How do you access your emotional core without draining your personal emotions and dragging them along into your acting in a negative way? Here's how. When you're accessing these emotions, you need to bring up something from your real life that allows you to get to that emotional point. Do your act, do your, do your scene, do your monologue, do your character, and then put it back. So there's a technique that's used in uh, psychotherapy and therapy where you picture a box. And in this box, you open up the box and there are all your emotions. And there, in, in, in therapy, sometimes they talk about all of your experiences. And the way that they do it is they take out, let's take out an experience that's a bad experience. And you have this bad experience and you take it out. Then you look at it and you talk about it. And then you take that experience, you put it back in the box in your head, you imagine it, you close it, you lock it, and then it's in that box. So it's not running around in your head that there's only specific times that you do that. Acting is very much like that. You need to continue to... Um, Practice the, this box technique so that you're able to pull out an emotion for your character. And how an actor does that is when you go into your mind, you're saying, what about my character, what in my life reminds me 
of this experience? Is there something that I've experienced that's like this? Most of the time, you'll find something that is like, like that enough. While you're in this quest for this emotion, you can say to yourself, my character needs this. My character needs this emotion. I'd like to borrow this emotion. I'd like to borrow this feeling. And then you can go off and use it. But if your mindset is telling yourself that you're going to be borrowing this emotion and that you're going to be returning this emotion, that's going to protect your, your emotions in your head and your psyche from getting too wrapped up into a character. Um, I've had this happen to myself. And it's not as dramatic as it sounds when we're talking about it. It's much more subtle. And that's why it's much more devious and deceptive. Because you won't know once you come home from a set why you're in a foul mood. But then you look back on all the scenes you did that day and you were angry or you were screaming or you were crying and you're emotionally drained. It's... It's not something like, oh, my God, you're going to turn into a murderer <laughs> and you're going to turn into Jack the Ripper and all of a sudden you're going to be killing people. No, it's not that. What it is, is if you're an actor that is allowing yourself to pull from your own emotions and play with them, your body physically won't know the difference. That's why you're able to cry. Okay? You're not crying because you're telling your, all right, tear ducks. Let it loose. I'm crying. No, mm -hmm. you don't cry from here. You cry from here. When you start in the eyes water, you don't feel it here. You feel it here. You feel sad. You feel upset. And because of that, your body has let loose all these different, you know, um, chemicals and hormones that we can't control. So the only way that we can get an ability to contain that is to take these out of the box, ask to borrow the emotions for my character so that your brain is still building up little areas of protection for yourself. That I, I'll tell you this quick story. I think I might have told you this before. Um, on, on JAG, they, they had a, a show where my wife was pregnant and she lost the baby in childbirth or, or shortly after childbirth. And it was the first really big dramatic scene I had on JAG that had to do with my family. <clears throat> and so I had just had a child. And I figured, great, I'll just imagine my son's died. It's not a good idea. And it worked for the scene in the sense that all during the day, I kept thinking, okay, when I get to the moment, I'll imagine it. And I, I knew I was smart enough not to do it like to practice, but I knew that that would trigger the emotion that I wanted. What I didn't know is that after we were shooting and we did it, we only did the scene once and it was with me and the guy that played the Admiral, John Jackson, who I absolutely love. He's, he's my favorite person from that show. We're sitting outside the elevator in the scene and I'm on a bench and he goes, what's going on? And I explained to him and I burst out crying. And they say cut, and I just kept crying because I had no control over this emotion that I had let out because I pictured the thing that you cannot picture when you're a parent. And I learned my lesson really, really well. And it, you know, he had to calm me down because it was, I felt guilty. I felt wrong. I felt dirty. I felt, it, you know, I, I felt loss. All of these things for what? For uh, to make me cry on a TV show? I promise at that moment, I'd never going to do anything like that again. I never recommend anything having to replace someone that you love or someone that you, is it? But you do have to have the conversation with yourself about being in a character that's borrowing this emotion and using it for something else. Um, how do you connect with your center? Well, this is where we get into a lot of the acting school stuff where you know you can meditate you can calm down you can bring your bring your attention down to the character but the reality is on working actor school how do you do it on the set well first and foremost you're going to want to you're going to want to have all your dialogue like locked locked in solid so that you're not 
thinking of what you're going to be saying. You will know your emotional journey. You will know your beats. You will know your intention. You will know uh, the range of emotion that you want to be able to, you know, exhibit in this performance. Then when you're there on the set, you need to stay calm and you need to stay centered. And I say centered in the sense that don't be making jokes. Don't be cracking the wise. Just stay within yourself so that you can stay within the confines of what you're going to be doing. Most sets will allow you this understanding and people will either stay away from you or if in, you know, on the really good sets, when they start shooting, they will, uh, they'll make sure that the whole set is quiet and it, it gives a very nice area in, in which to perform. If that's not happening, you still need to make sure that happens for yourself. So connecting to your emotional center on set is like looking within yourself, having the conversation with the emotion that you want to have, and then just let it have that initial introduction be there. And then when you start acting, bring it out. And then when they say cut, take a moment after they say cut to like chill out, say thank you to yourself. Thank you for letting me borrow that emotion. It's not really happening. Talking to yourself to allow you to realize that this isn't happening. Because more than likely, they might want you to do it again. Then that means you got to start the whole process over, which is what you want. You have to you have to start the process over because who knows if the scene is something that you, most scenes don't start with crying and end with them cutting. It starts with you talking or having something and then finding something out. So you're going to have a range of emotions before you're going to have this big emotional event. Now. That's connecting with your center. And then at the end of everything, you're going to need to disconnect with your center. And it's just basically what I explained after the cut. You let yourself know, thank you for letting me borrow this emotion from my character. That's not what I'm really feeling. I'm on a TV show. I'm on a movie. I'm on a play. I'm actually doing what I love. I'm in a very successful moment. And, and let talk to yourself in your head about these things. I know this is kind of highfalutin type of ephemeral talk. It's not really about how to memorize something, but it's very, very, very important if you're going to have a career that lasts more than a couple performances because you can burn yourself out very, very easily. And if this happens to be a play or if it happens to be a TV show where you're in a high stress or high emotional situation each episode, you're going to have to find a way in and out and still have a real life. Thanks for watching today. And if you liked what you saw, you can get into an online class at Working Actors School at workingactorschool.com. Of course, you can like and subscribe here. That'll help the YouTube channel. But if you want to get one-on-one -on -one acting instruction online, Working Actors School is the place to do it. You don't have to live in Hollywood to train in Hollywood. So go to workingactorschool.com and check out our classes. we got classes going on all the time.